Hi everyone, so today we continue with multidimensional arrays. We just finished a couple of uh, minutes ago talking about the problems in the lab for, for arrays and we continue with multidimensional arrays. So today we learn actually how to define arrays, how to initialize arrays, how to iterate over the elements of an array using the for each loops added in Java 5. And the problem is, what about if we want to store matrices? Or we want to store a matrix that has two dimensions based on the values of, uh, let's say, if we file taxes in the different ways and the values of uh, our income, we want to compute the tax for that given income. Another problem is, uh, what if we want to store the distances between any two cities in the United States? So we could represent it as a matrix where given the uh, starting city, any uh, ending city, like for instance destination like Boston, New York, Atlanta, Miami, Dallas, Houston, we basically have the distance in miles between the, those cities. For that, we really need to store them in a matrix because we have a two dimension for every city with any other city, there is a distance that needs to be stored in, uh, in the table. And for that, we can basically store it in a multidimensional array or a matrix. But the, the truth is that we can actually have not only matrices, but we can have cubes or any n-dimensional uh, array. So first we need to learn how to create a two-dimensional array. And actually the definition of a two-dimensional array is exactly the same with a one-dimensional array in the sense that uh, we declare an array, and that's actually the second uh, open close bracket that you see here, but the elements of that array are actually arrays themselves. So, in fact, a matrix is an array of rows. So, even the declaration, as we can actually see it here, tells us the fact that we, we can define an array with, where the type of elements are actually arrays of uh, the element data types. When we assign or we create an array reference, a multidimensional array, we basically create a new uh, matrix of 10 elements where each element is an array of 10 elements of the data type that is given. So in fact the declaration of a two-dimensional array and any multi-dimensional array follows exactly the same definition as a normal array. Basically we have an array of the rows which are could be arrays themselves. Similarly for three-dimensional cubes where we have basically the there are multiple indices there is the row number the column number and the depth within the current uh, 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 cube we can also combine the declaration and creation in one single statement as we did it for singular dimensional data structures and here we have the most general definition a reference variable that is a matrix is an array of rows where every row is an array of elements of the data type and this reference is assigned to the address of a new matrix that has 10 rows and each row is 10 elements of the data type type of elements. So as an example a two-dimensional matrix is basically an array of arrays of integers which contains 10 rows of 10 elements each of integers. There is an alternative syntax, again for historical reasons, you can actually put the open close brackets for arrays after the reference variable and not follow the Java standard that we have the entire type defined before the variable name. But this is not preferred, again it's kept only for historical reasons that this is how arrays were created before in C. Now, if we need to access an element at any given index in the matrix, basically we can access the row number and within the row, current row the element at uh, the column number in that matrix. So for instance, the first element, the element at index 0, the row 0 and column 0 is matrix of 0 and 0. 
and you basically use the open square brackets associated to the left to, act, to, uh, to extract the rows and then to extract the elements within those rows. You can either uh, uh, get those elements for assigning them new values or for using them for computing some values. So for instance, if we want to iterate over the elements of the matrix, we can first iterate over the rows for every index from 0 as long as i is less than the length of the matrix. The length of the matrix gives us the number of rows. And for every row, for every integer j from 0 to the length of the current row, so matrix of i, since i is given, gives us one row. And dot length gives us the length of that one row. Matrix of I, the row i and column j is assigned a random value between 0 and uh, 100 not 1000 not included. So we basically can declare matrices and we can uh, assign them values either directly by using the row and the column or uh, directly by using uh, two, two indices an index for the row between 0 and the matrix dot length uh, value, uh, not included, and then an index j for the length of that row. Matrix of i is the row itself, and matrix dot i dot length gives us the length of the row. So what exactly do we mean by this matrix dot length and matrix 0 dot length? We take three examples. The first example has the same number of rows as the number of elements in each one of the rows. So if, for instance, we create such a matrix of 5 by 5 integers, matrix dot length gives us the number of rows, which is 5, and matrix of 0 dot length gives us the number of elements in each row, but in our case, specifically in row 0. If we want to access an element in that matrix, we can use two indices. Matrix of 2 gives us the third row, and of 1 gives us the second element in that third row. So matrix of 2 and 1 gives us this element, which we can assign a value to. And now I'm taking an example in which the number of rows is different than the number of columns. In this case, we have four rows from index for in with indexes from 0 to 3. And we basically, the array dot length for that specific array gives us that the number, the length of that array, which is the number of rows, is 4. And array, dot, uh, array of 0 dot length gives us the length of the row with index 0, which is, in fact, the first row of the matrix. Okay. We can also create matrices using the uh, internal notation. Basically, uh, this is the syntactic sugar that internally gets translated into a new array of the number of rows and the number of columns. And to each element, we basically assign the value that is given in that matrix. So how are, how are actually uh, matrices actually stored in memory? And this is where you actually have this uh, notion why x dot length gives us the number of rows. And x of 0 or x of 1 or x of 2 dot length gives us the length of each row. The way that they are stored in memory as, is as, fo as follows. When we declare an array, which, uh, a matrix of rows of, rows of, L of arrays of integers, in fact, we are creating a reference, the address, of a location in memory that contains references to each one of the rows. So, in fact, x itself points to an array that contains x of 0, but x of 0 is the reference to an array that contains x of 0, 0, x of 0, 1, x of 0, 3, and x of 0, 4, an array of integers. So, basically, x is a reference to a, uh, an array of references. So, x dot length gives us the, the length of this array, which basically is 3. There are three elements in the, uh, in the array that are the pointers to rows. And then x of 0, x starts from index 0, takes us to this array. This array is an array of integers whose length is 4. So x of 0 dot length gives us the length of row 0. x of 1 dot length gives us the length of 
uh, of row 1. And x of 2 dot length gives us the length of row 2. Now, the same notation that we saw before for interned arrays is basically used to declare, create, and initialize all the elements of a two-dimensional array into one single statement. So basically, when we declare an array or as a matrix of uh, integers, and we assign directly to that array is an array of the rows from 1 to 3, another row is 4, 5, 6, another row is 7, 8, 9, and another row is 10, 11, 12. That's basically the same with creating a matrix of four rows and three integers in each row, where we assign to each row a of 0, 0, a of 0, 1, a of 0, 2, and so on, the elements in the matrix. Okay. So really, we have four, five lengths in this case. The length of the original array, that is the number of rows, in this case is 4. And then the length of array of 0, which is 3, array of 1, which is 3, array of 2, and array of 3, which are all 3. So here we have these three, the four lengths that are three each, and the length of the original array, which is the number of rows, which is four. If we would ask something like, what is the length of row four, of index four, it will actually tell us that there is no row with index four. The last row has index three. So we will get an exception, which is an error in Java, array index out of bounds exception. In Java, you can also create, because of the fact that internally in memory, the rows are stored separately, basically each row can have a length of its own, we can also create what are called ragged arrays. They are arrays where the rows have different lengths, or there exist at least two rows that have different lengths. So for instance, matrix.length gives us that there are five rows, but the matrix of zero.length gives us that there are five elements in the first row, and matrix, dot one, uh, matrix of 1 dot length gives us that there are four elements in the second row. So even from the second row, we can already infer the fact that this is a ragged array. It's a, a matrix that has a different number of elements in different rows. So how is it stored internally? We can actually see that internally they are stored as pointers. So triangle array is a reference to an array of five references in this case. Each reference is a reference to a different array. And internally in memory, they are actually stored as different rows. And we can actually see that through an example. So let's actually now return to Eclipse and to our test class. And we are going to create an example of matrices. Let's delete our selection sort method that we discussed last class. So first thing we are creating, let's say, an array of uh, integer or a matrix of integers that is ragged. So ragged means that different rows have different number of elements. Maybe the first row has the elements 1, 2, 3. Second row has the elements maybe 1 by itself or 4 by itself. And another row that has the elements 5 and 6. Okay. So first we can implement a method, is it ragged? So let's and let's call it is ragged. So matrix is ragged. If there are at least two rows that have different lengths. So let's take the integer matrix. And we basically can write a for loop. Actually, before that, let's store the length of the original row, the first row. L0 for, yeah, L0 for length of row 0. 
is a of zero dot length and for every row for every integer array row in the matrix a if that row length is different than l0 then we return true that that is a ragged array otherwise if we iterate over all the elements and they all have all the rows and all the rows have the length of the the first row then we return true okay so is ragged to take as an element the matrix good so let's run it it tells us that this is a ragged matrix and if it's not let's add more elements now it will tell us that this is a non ragged matrix it basically does not have different number of elements in different rows okay so let's see if there are any questions in the chat uh, Nadifa is asking if in slide 4 uh, are the for loops needed I wouldn't wouldn't the third line create a random number in the matrix? Okay. Uh, you need to create. So, when we create a matrix with uh, the previous statement that we had, new int of 10 by 10 we actually have a matrix where all of the elements are zero so we have to iterate over the elements one by one to create every random element in that matrix so let's actually do an experiment to make sure that this is exactly what we meant so instead of creating a matrix that actually is uh, uh, created let's actually create a new integer matrix of four rows and three columns each okay so if we would like to print it let's actually write a print statement for it for every row in the original matrix and for every element v in those rows we are going to print the row followed by uh, each element followed by a space and we are going to print a new line after each row okay so if we would run this uh, we don't need ragged anymore let's just clean it up if you run this it actually prints a matrix of four rows and three columns each row has three elements which are all zero so now if we want to assign them random values we actually need to uh, iterate over the matrix so for every integer row in matrix and now we need to iterate with uh, for each for for loop for every index i starting from zero as long as i is less than the length of the row we are going to assign a random value for row of i and we are going to use math.random multiplied with some random integer let's say 100 so this iterates over the matrix and for every uh, row it iterates over the elements indices of that row and changes the value of that row with a different value so now if we print it it actually prints a matrix of random integers every time okay. so any questions so Nadifa basically the point of uh, 
of that slide is that you can basically you can iterate over the the elements of the matrix which are in fact rows and you can do it with a for loop or you can do it over the indices or you can do it with a for each loop so let's think about this for each loop for each iterates over the elements of the matrix but the matrix contains rows so for every row which is of the type integer array from that matrix and then for every index from zero to the length of that row we can basically get access to this second dimensional basically uh, array so here we have uh, an example we basically for every row in triangle will basically be a pointer to one of the for each one of these rows and then for every row we iterate with the index to associate a value to that to the element in that row so in this case i'm basically both using uh, for each loops to gather references to the rows and then i'm using uh, for loops to iterate with the indices over the elements to associate to give them to assign them random values. If I would have used a for each loop for the inner loop, then I would basically get copies of those integers because uh, integer is a primitive type. And if I would assign some value to that uh, copy, it will not actually modify the row in the original array. Okay? So it is correct in both ways basically uh, you can do it with iteration over the row indices or you can do it with iteration over the rows but then you have to iterate with the indices to actually associate to every element a value okay excellent okay so let's continue so how do we initialize, for instance, a two-dimensional matrix with input values that the user enters? We basically, again, have to iterate over the rows and over the columns and ask the user to enter a value for every single element. So let's actually do it for our example. We are going to create an integer of 10 by 10 integers. So let's say that this is a matrix of 10 by 10. And then for every row, and for every index, we are going to ask the user to enter a value. So let's use an input scanner, which we are going to define to enter the next integer. So now we need to define that scanner. Let's do it at the beginning. Scanner input is equal with uh, a new scanner for the system input. So now, let's print the matrix after we actually read the entire matrix. So now the user actually has to enter the integer. Let's enter. Ah, seven. Let's do the same for the next line. Next line. Next line. Six more lines. Maybe we can copy it and paste it over and over again. Four, five and basically the entire matrix was read and then printed okay. so this is how we basically read one matrix uh, or we iterate with rows or over the indices of the matrix if we want to assign random values we already did it in the example basically we iterate over the rows we iterate over the columns and for every in the, uh, element at index row and column, we assign it a random integer. If we want to print the two-dimensional matrix, we already did it in a different way with uh, for each loops. We iterate over the indices in the row from 0 to the length of the current 
matrix, which is the number of rows. For every row, we iterate over the columns from index 0, as long as the column is less than the length of the current row, which is matrix of row dot length. We print out the value of matrix of row and column, which can be done much easily with for each loops. So we actually did it with for each loops. For every row in the matrix and for every value in that row, we print the value. You see that is a little bit faster, but you need to understand the fact that the elements of the original matrix are in fact arrays themselves. So row is really an array of integers. And then you can iterate with uh, uh, also a for each loop over the elements of that row. Okay. So for each loops, iterate over the rows and over the elements and print the elements and new lines after each row. If we need to sum the elements of the matrix. So in this case, we really need to define a total before we actually start iterating over the rows and columns in each row. And we should increment, we increment that total with the value of the element in that position. You can do exactly the same thing with for each loops. So for each loops, we start with a total equal with zero. For every row in the matrix and for every element in the row, the element is added to the total. Any question? Okay. Next, for summing the elements by column. So instead of summing the uh, entire matrix, we want to iterate over the columns and for every uh, row to select the element from that column and add it to the total and print the total for every column. So basically for this we need four, e four loops in all cases. First we iterate over the columns in row zero. For every row, for every column, we start a total equal with zero. And for every row in the matrix up to the length of the matrix, the total is incremented with the element at index row and column. Finally, for every column, for every uh, uh, row, column, we actually print the total. So let's actually implement this. Again, we are going to, instead of reading the array, this time I'm going to create an interned array. So let's say that in the first row I have one, two, three, and I have only two rows. In the second row, I have the elements four, five, six. And you can only do the sum by column for uh, rectangular matrices, no? So, in this case, we define a for loop for every integer, let's say C for column starting from zero, as long as C is less than the matrix of zero dot length. And we increment C with 1 at every step. We define a new variable total equal with 0. Now, for every row R starting from index 0, as long as R is less than the length of the matrix, The total is incremented with the element at index matrix of R and C. So finally, we print out the total for every column. Let's say the total for column. is total. And we need the comma when we declare the array. So now the program is complete. 
if we print it, it tells us the column the column zero has a total of five. One plus four is five. The column one has the total of seven. Two plus five is seven. The column two has the total of nine. Three plus six is nine. Okay. Any question? So Sudip is uh, writing a question right now. He's typing a question. So what do you need the second loop for? We basically, the first loop iterates over the columns. For every column, now we basically have to iterate over the rows to collect the elements from that column in order to compute the sum of the elements in that column. So this second for loop does that. It iterates over the rows, and for every row, it collects the element at column C. So we basically start from the first row to the last row, and for the column equal with 0, it sums 1 with 4. So the outer loop iterates over the columns from 0 to the length of the, the first row. The inner loop iterates over the rows and collects for that column every element and puts it in the sum. The problem being that we basically wanted to sum the elements by column, and for every column we want to print the element, the, the value of the sum. If you can, if you think that you can do it without the inner loop, uh, please explain your algorithm. The matrix dot length returns the number of rows. So, if basically it returns the length of a column of because this is a, rank, reg, uh, uh, a regular, non-ragged matrix, a uh, rectangular matrix. Okay, anyway. So we are, I'm going to... Uh, actually, the code is already in the lecture notes. If we want to randomly uh, shuffle the elements in the matrix, basically this means that for every element, we generate a random I1 and J1, a random row number and a random column number, or basically element within that row. We would swap the element at index IJ with that randomly generated index. So for that, we need to assign to a temporary variable matrix of II. So we can use matrix of II to store matrix of I1 and J1. A matrix of I1 and J1 can be now assigned the value temporary. So let's assume that we had this original matrix. We want to shuffle the elements in that matrix and return a random, basically, permutation of that matrix. So what the problem basically did, it started with the integer, with the rows. For every row, I within the size of that matrix. And for every column, J, as long as that column is less than the current row length, basically one of the elements in that column, we generate a random position, row number, which is the integer part of math.random multiply with the number of rows and then we generate a random position in that row random column in that row it's also going to be integer the integer part of math.random multiplied with that row's length. So in fact, this method will also work 
four ragged matrices. The element at index, so let's define a temporary of ij. So now we can use matrix of ij to store the value of matrix of i1, j1. And matrix of i1, j1 is assigned a value of 10. So at this point, we basically can print this matrix. And we print a new line after the matrix. Okay, so let's run it. It basically randomly shuffles the elements in that matrix. You see? From 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, it generates randomly a permutation. And as I said, it doesn't matter if this is a ragged matrix, it will still generate randomly uh, indices within that domain and nothing else. Okay, any questions? So for every position it generates another random position and swaps the element at the current position with that random element. Okay, so what about n-dimensional arrays? What if I want to store the grade for all the students in this class, uh, for all the labs, and I have five classes? I can basically create a three-dimensional matrix. The scores would be an integer array of 10 by 5 by 25. Now, I think I modified it a little bit because there are different number of students. 10 would be the number of rows, uh, 5 for the different five courses, and for every course, I can get the element at depth 20, uh, up to 25, not included, from 0 to 25. So really, you can store and use any kind of n-dimensional arrays. Most cases, uh, people use uh, one or two-dimensional arrays, but you can actually have as many dimensions as you would like. So at this point, we can actually go over the lab for today, and we can actually leave it as part of the lecture recording. So, as part of the lab for today, there are a few more problems. So, first, write a method that sums all the uh, numbers in a column in an n by n dimensional array of doubles, a two dimensional array, using the following header. We basically pass in the matrix and a column number, and it should return the sum of the elements in that column, and only that. So for that, we are going to, let's actually create a new program. So you can actually submit exactly the same thing. A new class, let's call it sum matrix. Okay. So let's create in the main method a double matrix. Let's call it A. And let's create it in line. So this matrix contains two rows, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now we would like to compute the sum of some column and some column takes as an input the matrix and the column number. Let's say what's the sum of the elements in column number two. So what we are expecting, we are expecting three 
plus 5 plus 7, which is 10. Okay. Let's actually print it. And we are going to print just the sum. So now we need to implement this method. So let's take the method and implement it. So first we need a total initialized with zero and for every row in that uh, matrix in fact we can use a for each loop the total is incremented with the element at index C in that row and we return the total. So the matrix is passed as a parameter. The parameter is a matrix. Ah, we should call it matrix. Good. So if we run it, it prints 10. Exactly what we expected. 10.0 because it's a double. Any questions about this problem from the lab? Okay, excellent. Next problem. Sum the columns. Write the test problem that first prompts the user to enter an n by n matrix and then ask them to enter the matrix row by row with the elements separated by spaces. And the program should then print the sum, print out the sum of all the columns in the matrix. Okay, so let's actually do this. It's a little bit longer than usual, but uh, it's just practice. A lot of practice. So first thing is that we need to import uh, javaotil.scanner. Okay. Then in the main method we are first going to create a scanner. Let's ask the user to enter the number of uh, rows and columns in that uh, square matrix. It doesn't really need to be square, but let's assume that it's square. Enter N. Uh, at this point, we can create the matrix. So, in our case, this is a two-dimensional matrix of, it could be anything, let's say, integers. Let's ask the user to enter the elements. And let's uh, compute the sum of every row. For every column. for every uh, row mm. 
we increment the total with a of j and i. Okay, and now we print it. Okay, so let's run it. Let's say that we enter a square matrix of 2 by 2 and the elements of the matrix are 1, 2, 3, 4 and the sum of the elements in column 0 is 4, the sum of the elements in column 1 is 6. Excellent. Any questions? In question number 5, do we need to Write a method that sums all the elements using the following header. Uh, it doesn't actually say how to read uh, the matrix, so you can as well give it a matrix without having to read it in any way. Okay, random checker board. Write a program that randomly fills with zeros and ones. An 8x8 checkerboard prints the board and finds the rows, columns, or diagonals with all zeros or ones. And we want to use a two-dimensional uh, array to represent the checkerboard. And here is the sample. Basically, after we print a random checkerboard, we should uh, print if uh, there is either only zeros in the minor diagonal or some other numbers in the uh, major diagonal or in any row or any column we have zeros or ones. It's like tic-tac-toe but uh, for a bigger matrix of 8 by 8. Okay. So for that let's actually implement the random checkerboard program. So we create a new class, random checkerboard, and we are going to use an integer matrix for storing the values. Let's call it A. It's a new integer matrix of 8 by 8. And for every element, we generate random values. So row of any i is assigned the integer part of math.random multiplied with 2. So now if we print the matrix, it should really print a random matrix every time. Okay, so now we have to check all of those uh, conditions. First, we need to check if uh, either the main diagonal or the major, or uh, this is the major diagonal or major or minor diagonals are all zeros 
or one. Okay. Good. So let's define two integers. Let's call it one major and one minor. And then let's iterate over the matrix for every integer i starting from 0 as long as i is less than the length of the matrix and i is incremented with 1 at every step. Uh, let's need, let's actually, yeah, we can do it in one line. Major is incremented with a of i i. Now, if the major is zero, then we can actually print the message all ones on the major diagonal similarly if the major diagonal is uh, 8 uh, it's then it's all ones otherwise it's all zeros and let's do it for the minor diagonal too so minor is incremented with a of i and a of length minus 1 minus i. So now we can actually copy this and say that if minor is 8, then all ones on the minor diagonal. And if minor is 0, then we have all zeros on the minor diagonal. Okay, so let's do a few. No, I misspelled minor. I'm expecting that if I run randomly multiple times, uh, one of them will eventually be all zeros or all ones on the diagonals. So the way that we created random numbers is that we uh, computed math.randommultiply with 2. That gives us a value between 0 and 1, uh, 0 and 2, not including 2. And then we cast it to integer, which gives us random numbers between 0 and 1. Looks like I never get random numbers that are the same on the major and minor diagonals. Okay, I guess, uh, I think it's correct. I, I just guess that I can't get a random matrix or the probability is very small. Okay, let's print a major and minor. Okay, let's take for instance the minor is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and the major is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So it just never happens. Uh, randomly, we can't get 
the probability that we get uh, matrices with uh, the same columns, uh, uh, zero or ones, is very, very low. One out of uh, probably 100 matrices. Okay, good. Uh, I will not probably wait. Okay, so let's iterate now over the columns and rows. So for every i from 0 to the length and for every j from 0 to the length of the current row i, uh, we should again define a variable outside the loop. Let's call it total. And this could be assigned 0. The total should be incremented with A of IJ. And again, if the total becomes 8, Then all the all ones on the row i. Or all zeros on the row i. Okay, so let's run this. Now this is too much. Really? We never can get... This is... Okay, let's do the columns too, and then try both rows and columns. So for rows and columns, we swap the row and column number. Okay, let's run it again. Yes, finally. All ones on row 1. And that's true. Oh, all zeros on column 2. Okay. So it works. Uh, basically, it does uh, random generate the matrix and then finds all zeros on column 4 and you can see on column 4 they are all zeros okay excellent that was long because it's basically random generated so let's actually see what's the next problem it's tic-tac-toe we write a program that does uh, the same thing for tic-tac-toe okay so it looks to me that the only thing that we need to change is the matrix is 3 by 3. So there are all zeros on row 1, basically this, and all zeros on column 1, which is this. Okay, excellent. So the program actually is the same for the two problems. The only thing that you have to change is the uh, dimensions. And finally, in the last problem, you should implement a game that actually uh, that uh, actually asks the user to enter 0 or 1 in each row and each column. I will let you do that uh, on your own. Thank you very much for today, and I will uh, record this for your colleagues.